good morning again. Uh, I am Pradnya, and uh, as I mentioned uh, during the overview of workshop, basically the goal of this workshop is to make every one of you able to develop some small applications for Akash tablet. So, at the end of this workshop, we expect you to come up with some nice educational applications for tablet and uh, uh, definitely, I mean, Fatak sir has already given you incentive that, you know, there will be a cash prize and lot of other things. So, definitely, please uh, help us to build a Akash community which will contribute towards the educational applications. So, let us start this great cause with a great introduction. Yeah, so the under uh, introduction, see basically the introduction to Android would be a, like FYI session for you. It will, I mean, tell you what all happens behind this uh, great, you know, cool technology. So, in students language, it will be a, like theory lecture, but I will promise you that, you know, I won't torture you that much. I will minimize my torture from my end. So, please be, uh, bear with it. So, let us start with it. So, the contents which uh, we will cover is the introduction, what is Android, etc. The Android version and API level, very important point as a developer to know what your device supports which version and API level, a very important part. Otherwise, your application will not run on device. A big picture is nothing but a how Android stack looks like. Then the comparison of Dalvik virtual machine and Java virtual machine. This Dalvik virtual machine is a very interesting part what Android people came up with and th this is why Android is so fast. Then next is Android features, some out of box feature what Android provides. Then application fundamentals, uh, we have .apk file which we install on Android device. So, what is this .apk? We will look into that. Then Android application components, these are basic programming building block. So, as a developer you will always deal with these. So, this is important for you to know. So, let us go next. So, what is an Android? It is a well known Linux based OS primarily for touch screen mobile devices like smartphones, tablets. It was initially developed by Android INC and then purchased by Google in 2005. So, in Google, uh, so Google started working on DVM in 2005 and then after 3 years they came up with first Android device in 2008. And uh, rest all is history, all of us know how popular Android is today. Next, Android is open source and Google releases its code under Apache 2 license. Now, this is an important feature why Android is so popular in the market. Because it is an open source, so and it is released under Apache 2 license. What Apache 2 license says is, you know, you derive your code from the original work, you can use it for any purpose, you can modify it, you can redistribute it. So, whatever these hardware manufacturers are like HTC, Micromax and lot of others, what they do is they just uh, customize the Android for their own purpose and they just redistribute it. So, the cost for this is zero, no licensing, no paying of royalty, nothing. So, that is why Android is so popular in the market because of the cost saving. And last is the Google Play Store. A very useful place for you people, if you want Angry Bird app for your Akash tablet, this is a place you should visit. Basically, you will have all kind of Android applications at one place, which is a Google Play Store. You just think of anything and you will have app for that. So, open Android, what it means to be open and why would you care? So, basically, I have given this link, I am not sure whether it is visible for you or not. This is the Apache 2 license link. So, those who are interested to do that, you can go and uh, you know check out what are the terms and conditions to do it. So, what do you mean by it is an open Android? As I had already told you, it is an open source. Google is releasing its code under Apache 2 license. You can use this code for free of cost, nothing need to be paid. So, you know that is why it is so popular. The brief history of Android, this is basically for just for reference when different Android version came into the market. Like if you just glance through this, in 2009 it was from Cupcake to Eclair, then 2010 from Froyo to Gingerbread and if you just observe these are like alphabetical names of deserts. I do not know what it, what made to them to make this desert names. If you see that this is a picture representation of these versions. This is still what we had till 2010. Now, then in 2011, it was Honeycomb, then ICS and our Akash tablet has have a ICS version. 
I will show you how to check the version of the device. And 2012, the latest update is Jelly Bean. Let me just go and show you. So again, a representation, all desert names they have provided. So yeah, so this is about the versions and next is the API level. So what is this API level? Basically API level is a unique integer identifier for API framework. Again now what is API? This is application programming interface. So in normal language API is nothing but you will have lots of classes, lots of attributes to use which you can use in actual code. So these, what is, why do they need, I mean, and revision of API. So definitely with each API level, there will be some uh, plus minus and then they have come up with a revision of each API level. So whenever new API comes into the market, it's always an additive change. The old won't be removed, it will be deprecated, which means there is something new better available in the market, which you can use. So if you try in the Eclipse editor and something comes as a strike through, if you try a class name and something come as a strike through, like a new, I guess, notification manager class. So that's a deprecated one. And uh, if you get that, that's a, which means that there is something better available in the market, which you can use. So in new API, the better has been uh, made available for you. So what I want to emphasize on is the API is an additive change. Old won't be removed, but yes, it may be deprecated. So for each, version, there is a corresponding API level. So for our Akash tablet, we, uh, we come at this level, that is 4.0.3 and API level is 15 and version name is ice cream sandwich. And the rest all is for your reference. I have uh, mentioned the all versions and corresponding API level. You can go through it later on, depending on device on which you want to code, you want to support your applications, you can go ahead with it. Uh, this is nothing but API level grouping basic, uh, basic based on the need why it developed. The first API was specially for smartphones, then the 3.0 to 3.2 came for tablets and from Android 4 onwards, Android is everywhere, let it be smartphones, tablets, just think about it and it is there. So let's move ahead, the choosing API level, why I mention it is important because it depends on device support. Uh, basically, your app, you need to know your device, device uh, is on which version and corresponding API level, or, I mean, so the application in corresponding API level will only work on the device. And there is a something called as application forward compatibility and backward compatibility. This is pretty logical. So for example, if I have a device which has a version 4.1, Jelly Bean, and I compile my application using 4.0, that is ICS. So it will work on, the, my, on my device, but vice versa may not be true, which means I have a device which is 4.0 and I compile my uh, application in 4.1 and if I try to run on device, it may not work. For obvious reason that each API has an additive change, something new. If you have used that new functionality of API and trying to run on the old API level, it won't work. Simple reason, so pretty logical. but important to understand. The next is a version in Akash tablet. I'll just quickly show you how to check it. Let's go to the settings. I'm just going to settings then in settings there is about tablet. So can you see this Android version 4.0.4. So this is what I'm talking about. You should check your device version and then only start programming. And also one more thing, there is a kernel version 3.0.8. This is important if you want to have, you know, Android custom image for your device. But let's not go into that right now. Let's come back to our slides. So the big picture, this is actually really big. It's not coming in the one screen. <laughs> So, I mean, you can get this diagram on developer.android.com, but let me just show you that there are f three different colors and three different stacks. So, what we'll do is we'll go to bottom up. The bottom most uh, stack is a Linux kernel, then there is a libraries and then application framework where your application actually sits. 
will go through the one layer, one by one layer because it is not anyway visible in, in this diagram. So, let us look at the red layer, the Linux kernel. So, as I have already told you and most of us already know that it runs on the Linux. Basically, it gives its hardware abstraction layer. So, why Linux? Several reasons. Again, Linux is open source, lot of things have been already explored about the Linux. So, it gives an advantage. Second, Linux has a such a strong kernel, uh, such a strong driver model, which makes even Android a portable uh, OS. Because, I mean, as all of us know, Linux runs on any platform. You just name it and it runs. So, the objective of Android was also to run on the many, many different devices. And this, both, object, uh, both objective came together. That is why the, they have chose the Linux. As a user, you will never see the Linux subsystem. You will always see the top layer that is applications. The Linux is doing its work at the bottom. Why, what is it doing, why it is important, we will just see the later part of this session. Then um, there is some, uh, on Akash tablet I have already showed, shown you Linux kernel version is 3.0.8. And there is a command using which you can open up the Linux shell. This is an ADB command, it is an Android debug bridge. Basically a very versatile, useful command tool which connects to your emulator or your connected device. I mean we will have dedicated session on this on day 3 and a very useful tool which gives you access to the Linux shell and to do lot of things. The session would be conducted by Srikan on third day and it would be a really useful session for you to, under, to, you to attend. Then next is a green layer. So on the red layer, the, there is a green layer which sits the libraries. So these are basically bits and pieces which Android people just, you know, borrowed from different open source projects and made available in Android. So if you check out OpenGL, this web SQLite, WebKit, you must have already heard it with context of different programming languages. For example, OpenGL is widely used in C++. Whatever games you see, those are mostly developed using C++ in OpenGL. So these are just libraries which Android people borrowed and made available on Android. On the right hand side, what you see is a pretty in interesting part, that is a Dalvik virtual machine, a very well talked about. Uh, basically, Dalvik virtual machine is a substitution of JVM, what we have in, had in Java. You must have seen in earlier session, there was a diagram where, you know, JVM was running the Java bytecode. So, Dalvik virtual machine uh, runs its Dalvik bytecode. Why it is required, we already had JVM, etc. We will just see this after this slide. And uh, as I mentioned, these are open source library used for different, different purposes. WebKit for fast HTML rendering, OpenGL for graphics, media codecs to support the ma uh, media framework. Maximum, most popular media framework is supported in Android. Then SQLite database, this is a permanent data storage, how you can store a data on Android. We will have a session on this also. Let us complete our architecture diagram first. Then the blue layer, our application framework and application. So, as a developer, you will deal with these two maximum time. You will avail the service, services provided by the application framework in your applications, like uh, activity manager. So, I mean, in simple terms, activity is something on a screen with which user can interact, you know, anything, I mean, which needs a user interaction. So, whatever applications you see, for example, an Angry Bird application. So, you know, it needs that user to pull that and release it. So, that is again an activity. So, what this, why this, I am a lot of emphasizing on activity because this is what you will develop in the next session. A basic Android application program will have an activity, will have some user interaction. I mean, that is why, because we are dealing with a touch screen environment. So, everything has to be with related to user with you know comfort of user. So, activity is important part. These are, this is just uh, two diagrams to understand what happens at the background. I mean consider an email activity. So, you open a email application, you get an inbox, right? You go to the compose email. So, uh, so the inbox activity calls the compose email activity. So, which means what happens at the background? Suppose my main activity is my inbox activity, which is calling the compose activity. So, this, so the main activity gets stored on the back stack and the activity 2 is pushed in. So, this follows last in first out, a normal stack operation 
and what happens activity 2 that is my compose email is visible on my screen and my main activity my inbox activity is in the background so what happens when user clicks on the back button when user clicks on the back button the main activity becomes a visible that means my inbox will be visible sorry my inbox will be visible and my compose uh, compose email activity would be popped out from the back stack so i just wanted to no uh, make a note of it that you know this is everything is getting handled by the activity manager by your application framework services i mean you don't need to think about that okay i need to store my data i need to show this activity then i need to store uh, you know which activity i had shown last no activity manager is doing everything for you it's just that avail its uh, use its services and just do it in your application it is that simple there are several other managers available like content providers content provider basically gives you the data which is shared across the applications if multiple applications wants to share some common data then this is the place which you would like to go then there are other things like notification manager if you have a smartphone you must have already noticed you get a lot of notifications that you know you have a missed call the battery is low so the, this is everything gets handled by the notification manager and on top of this are those are our applications what you actually see you must have seen in tablet also there is a default browser there is contacts there are a lot of other things so that's it about the architecture let's go next that this is actually to show the how process differs in java and the at android in dalvik virtual machine so basically at java what we have is you have already seen let's just see the left hand side diagram let's concentrate on it the java source code then the compiler byte code java byte code runs on the jvm straight forward what happens at the android side at android side we have a java source code we have a java compiler we get java byte code then there is a dx compiler a special compiler which converts it to the dalvik byte code and this dalvik executable runs on the dvm now this is what marked in red is a something new steps which android people introduced why it is required basically a java compiler or rather java byte code itself is a very verbose code a very heavy code if you try to decompile java byte code you will get everything back as it is right from your code your resources your things everything so i mean this is not possible to run on the smartphone on a or a tablet where you know we have a power issue a power optimization is required you cannot run applications which are very you know consuming heavy powers you have to consider that so that's why they come up with this dx compiler and this optimized code this opt this code basically optimizes java basically dalvik byte code optimizes the java byte code at several layers and if you you know try to decompile basically to decompile dalvik byte code is pretty difficult and if you succeed in that you won't get your java source code back there will be a lot of you know assembly code which you have to do lot of other things to get your code back so basically it does a lot of optimization to give you a small and optimized code let's go next a uh, very talk you know well known sorry a very well known difference between the dvm and jvm so why i am emphasizing so much on dvm jvm see because it's it's important to understand that yes android is based on java yes it follows java syntax yes but there are some difference differences than the java and this is a major important difference because if we start using jvm on tablets and smartphones your application will start crash definitely so this is important then so dvm follows a register based architecture so being a i guess engineering student you must be able to understand what is a register based and jvm follows a stack based i just have a small example to show you what is register based and stack based so basically this is a stack based so here is my program i am just adding simple two numbers i have my stack pointer stack pointer is here right and just to add simple two programs i need these four lines of instructions that is pop 20 pop 7 add 20 and 7 and store the result and push the result back so 27 is pushed back so just to do to just to add two uh, numbers i have to you know follow four lines whereas in register based what happens is a single line of instruction will do your work add r3 r1 r2 r3 is my destination r1 r2 is my source so you know add r1 r2 and store it in r3 
this is a diagrammatic representation. So, it is adding phi and 30 and storing it in 35. So, what happens in register base is you need to give directly the address of register. We need to give the register name over there. So, the length of instruction definitely increases, but the number of instruction decreases. That is why DVM follows the register base architecture because it has the less number of instructions. So, here is the difference clear number of operations in DVM would be fewer as it follows register base. In JVM, it would be more because it follows stack base. And the file format I have al uh, already talked about. See, JVM it is known dot class. Basically, this dot dex is a Dalvik byte code. So, your source code in Android gets compiled to the dot dex instead of class because of the Dalvik compiler. I have already shown you because there is one more step. This is Dalvik bytecode and this Dalvik bytecode nothing but dot dex file. So, we have covered this, this, let us go ahead. So, as I mentioned to you, yes, Android is based on Java, it follows Java syntax, it follows a lot of things in Java, but there is difference. So, Android Java consists of Java standard implementation minus AWT Swing plus Android API. So, AWT Swing, if you have worked on it in Java, it is not supported in Android. It is completely removed. They have come up with their own UI, which is part of Android API. And why this Android API was added? Because of touch screen. I mean, we need a extensive touch screen support when we are dealing with Android because we are talking about the smartphones and tablets. So, this was, this was required. So, they just removed this AWT swing and added an Android API. So, this is how the, the standard Java and Android Java differs. So, you will see lot of Java APIs in Java is not supported in Android. This is the reason. So, let us go next. These are some out of box feature what Android gives out of box feature what Android gives us like application framework enabling reuse and replacement of components. Now, this is pretty interesting feature to understand as a developer. So, what what it mean by it is there are so many applications already available out of box for you. So, whenever you want to use any application, you do not need to code for it. For example, in my application, I want to use a camera. My application requires that camera should be open, it should click a picture, it should give me back. I do not need to write a code to access the camera, store the image, nothing. It will be handled by the camera application altogether. There would be an intent or rather you can say there would be an activity which will do it for you. You just need to call it in your program. So, this is a reusability. It uses I mean extensible reu reusability framework in it. And it is you will see that you know there are so many complex applications, but they are so pretty to so easy to code. So, this is about the application framework reusability. Then we have already seen the Dalvi DVM. Then there is optimized graphic support, it has to be there, it, the UI has to look very cool and attractive. So, I optimized graphic support like 2D, 3D, OpenGL support. There is a SQLite for the permanent data storage. We will have dedicated session on SQLite, how to access, how to store data, a very useful one. Then the, uh, I already told you there are almost popular media formats are supported in Android. Then there is a, these three feature, the last three feature depends on your hardware manufacturer. So, if they have given it, then only you will have it in device. That is a GSM telephony, Bluetooth, 3G, Wi-Fi direct, hotspot, camera. So, I mean, you can just go see at the glance that, you know, how much is there in an Android. I mean, whatever you, th you think of it, it is there. I mean, everything is supported. It's just up to you to how to use it. So, this is Android features. And this is our Akash tablet features, our Akash tablet feature. ICS, then optimized graphic support, we have Wi-Fi, which you must have already, you know, connected during the clicker quiz. We have camera, accelerometer, SQLite, media support and lots of them. The application fundamentals. Now, um, see, when we install our application on the Android device, it is in the format, uh, format of .apk, which is nothing but an application package file. What you see, you know, I mean, I, would, I don't want to relate, I mean, technically it would be incorrect, but what you see on .exe on Windows, what .exe does, it installs something. So, similarly on Android happens with .apk, but technically it is incorrect to relate because .apk is more like a .jar file in Java. It is a compressed format, that is it. 
So it's a like a zip package format which is based on a jar. So basically your dot apk will hold all these things. How your dot apk gets created? You have a Java source code, it gets uh, converted to dot dex and after dot dex it gets converted to the dot apk. So dot apk will have along with a code lot of other things. There are resources. What is resources? Anything other than your code would be resource. You know you want to play some video, you want to show some images, you want to uh, place some file, any, anything it would be in the resources. Similar with the assets, then the some certificates if your device needs to sign, then the manifest file. Manifest is a pretty important file in application because it's like a controller file you can say. It defines lot of system properties, it gives you know permissions to your application and lot of other things. For example, I, as I mentioned earlier, I have an application where camera needs to be accessed. So I have to give my permission in manifest, then only this Linux kernel will under, understand that okay, this application needs a camera. So this is what dot apk holds and what happens once dot apk is installed on the device. As I mentioned that you know, although as a user Linux kernel does not come into the picture at any layer, but this is what it does. Once it is installed on a device, every application will have its own uh, user id. It will, it will sit in its own security sandbox, it will have its own virtual machine, it will have its own Linux process. So if you see, if you understand this, every application will run in a isolation compared to the other application. So two application will not interfere with each other. So it is a great security mechanism. I know we are running out of time, let me just cover up quickly rest all things. Android application components. Now as I mentioned earlier, these are basically programming building blocks in Android. So you uh, compare with a Java, what will you think a programming blocks in Java? A classes for desktop application, JSP servlet for web applications. Now here we are talking about a completely different environment. Android was developed for this touch screen devices which are smartphones and uh, tablets. So what do you need on this? So you need something you know where user will interact, user will touch, something will happen. You will need something where uh, you know the notifications are coming that you know okay your battery is getting low, you have a missed call. You need something which is you know running in the background. For example, I am upgrading my sub software. So this has been developed with that aspect. It is not I mean with a Java aspect, it is a different one. So what is activity? Act so these are basically four blocks and let us just see quickly one by one because today in the evening you will have dedicated session on this where you will actually code this, run it and see it on your device. So basically activity is nothing but something which needs a user interaction. It is a component which provides a screen with a user can interact in order to do something. And it is implemented as a subclass of activity. So your first program will start which will extend a activity. All right. So next is the services. Services, as I mentioned, something is happening in background for a long time. I am upgrading my software. So that is what a service is. Again implemented by a subclass of service. Then the content provider. Now content provider is an interesting part. I mean it manages shared set of application data. I mean consider application which is a to-do list. I have marked a to-do list and I have you know marked that okay I have to call someone at this time, I have to do this, I have to do this and if other applications needs to access that corresponding status that whether I have called that person or not, I have uh, I, ha I had my lunch or not then yes this is the this is the thing which you will need a content provider. So you know my to-do list can share its status with rest all applications whenever required. So this is a content provider implemented by subclass of content provider. Then there is a broadcast receiver. It is a component that responds to the system wide broadcast announcement. Consider example if I have downloaded some file and all application needs to understand okay now for example uh, uh, any player I mean some VLC player is available for you. So if I have downloaded that VLC player and all application needs to understand, for example my custom application needs to understand okay VLC player is there, I can play my video. So this is the thing, I mean in your application you need to implement your broadcast receiver which will receive this notification that okay it has been downloaded, it is ready to use. And this is just a last slide for you, okay this is the activity life cycle diagram, a pretty huge one. 
uh, okay so whatever you see in the gray box it these are nothing but methods which you can actually implement for example it starts from top to and goes bottom as activity starts so first would be on the names are self explanatory you can understand by reading it it's on create then on start so activity will be available for user interaction after on resume once you do the on resume then activity would be available for user to interact so it can go for on pause if you know some application with a higher priority needs some memory or it can go for a on stop on then on destroy so i mean you can see these are so important methods for uh, i mean we are talking all the time about the performance optimization the power optimization and etc so for example on on pause i am using a file resource so i should release it i mean the first and foremost thing when you will deal with android application is never preserve your resources whichever you are using always release it when it's not in use so you know on pause you can just release your resources you can release your file object so that will reduce the burden on the application and the uh, power consumption so this is it i won't go into the detail now as we are running out of time so let's go to the summary this is all we have learned lot of things rather i hope it was a useful session for you and these are some references so basically you just need to go to developer.android.com this is a bible for android developer you don't need to go anywhere else this is the first and foremost kickstart for you and yeah thank you so much for listening